All right, we're going to talk about breathing a little bit. Of the fundamentals, if you're talking about what is going to cause one shot to do one thing and another shot to do another thing, errors that you'll find with breathing, the way they're going to manifest themselves is going to be inconsistencies in your shots in the vertical plane. <clears throat> the fix for this is always to break your shot at the bottom of the breathing cycle, given time and opportunity. We hope that's not always possible. We're going to try to do it as best we can. An example that we can give you is uh, here at Rifles Only, we had a shooter that was shooting at the 700 yard target off the tower, started sorting that out to where we had all the fundamentals correct, straight behind the gun, natural point of aim, sight, picture, trigger control, follow through. The only thing we changed was breathing. This shooter would break the shot at different points in the breathing cycle just to see what we saw down range with it. About 40 inches of vertical was what we came up with. Um, that could be caused simply because a shooter is holding their breath, they're breaking at the top of the breathing cycle, they're breaking in the middle somewhere, they're breaking at the bottom. What we're looking for is we're looking for consistency in the breathing. I ask shooters all the time, do you hold your breath when you shoot? Well, no, absolutely not. And I say, okay, well, let's talk about this for a second. Probably people have hunted whenever they learned how to hunt. What they came up with was someone taught them how to shoot. Whatever they taught them how to shoot, they said, hey, put the crosshairs right on the animal, take in a breath, let it halfway out, hold it, and pull the trigger. That's the answer. That's the way most of us were taught to shoot. The problem with that is, how do you find that half breath? The half breath may be real consistent when you're sitting out on the range. It's not raining, it's not cold, not hot, no problems whatsoever. You might be able to find that exact half breath every single time. However, if you've just had to come in from an area, carrying all your stuff, you're winded, whatever the case may be, holding your breath at the same point in your breathing cycle at that point becomes problematic. The other reason that you don't want to hold your breath is because you're starving your body for oxygen. Whenever your body begins to starve for oxygen, the first thing to go is going to be your eyesight. You will not notice this. Your eyes will begin to flutter, but you won't notice it because your brain is going to compensate for it. During some of the, the stress fire courses out here at Rifles Only, we've seen people not only their eyes flutter, but their head begins to shake and their entire upper body begins to have a little bit of a tremble. It just means, simply, that their heart rate is accelerated their respiration rate is accelerated and they're trying to hold their breath so that they uh, wrongly think that it makes them more stable. It doesn't. Everybody has a breathing cycle. Breathe in, you breathe out. Breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. Where you want to break your shot, try to, given time and opportunity, is going to be right at the bottom of the natural respiratory pause. Key word being natural. You don't want to exaggerate that to where you're pushing 100% pushing of the air out of your lungs. You don't want to short stroke it to where you still have some air in your lungs because then you're breaking up here. If this is on this scale, let's make this scale just a little bit bigger. We breathe out, we come in and we breathe in. As we're breathing out, when we get to that point right at the bottom of our natural exhalation cycle, that's where we try to break the shot. If something else is going wrong, we're seeing it in a picture that the reticle's starting to drift, whatever the case may be, stop. Don't break the shot. Just simply start your breathing cycle again. Come in and then come out again. If everything is set up the way you want it to be, you can break the shot. A lot of times people will say, well, we can drag this area here out for three to four seconds. That may be true. I wouldn't go past much about two. If you get that beyond two seconds, without you knowing it, your body is going to begin to starve for oxygen and your eyes will begin to flutter. We see it time and time again. Imagine it like this. Whenever you break at the bottom of your breathing cycle, <clears throat> that's the point where you're most collapsed on your skeletal structure. And it really doesn't make a difference if you're shooting prone or some sort of positional shooting or an alternate position with some sort of modified rest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Break at the bottom of your shot. If I had two balloons here on the table, and I'm sitting here because they're half full and I'm bouncing them. I can get a little bit of play this way or another. If the air is taken out, the balloons are flat. I'm collapsing onto my skeletal structure and that will give me the most consistent place to break the shot. Again, it may not always be possible given time and opportunity, but that's what you want to try to do. All right, if we look at this breathing pattern here, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, this same pattern would be evident even if a person is stressed. If you're stressed, you're, um, you've carried a bunch of pack, uh, you've run a long way, whatever the case may be, your breathing cycle is still going to have the same pattern. You may be breathing heavier, faster, and deeper, but that's irrelevant. 
you're always still going to have that bottom of the breathing cycle place that you want to break the shot. If you go and you make a run, or for whatever reason that you could be stressed, a lot of things will happen to you. A little bit of auditory exclusion, some tunnel vision, your heart rate is very high, your breathing is, is extremely raised. A lot of times what people will do is they'll think that if they hold their breath, it'll make them more steady. Oxygen deprivation is what's going to kick in at that point. The only way to combat the effects of that, the elevated heart rate, auditory exclusion, tunnel vision, is by breathing. You didn't have to tell your body to breathe heavy. It did it on its own. It's not something that's conscious. If your body is breathing heavy, if you are breathing heavy, your body is saying, give me O2. The worst thing that you can do at that point is hold your breath. Always breathe. Always breathe. We always ask the question, you know, who holds their breath? No one raises their hand, but it comes out when we get on the range, we find out. Looking over here at some targets. Now, admittedly, these are three different targets from three different shooters. Just looking at this from a target analysis point of view. If we look at this, at this target right here, and understand this is during a, a stress fire shoot, this is during a running gun, and here's the kicker, all of these targets are less than 100 yards, but it is alternate positions. Here, we have less than 100 yards, here's the bottom shot, and here's the top shot. Roughly three and a half, four inches there. All of that can be attributed to breathing, not breaking at the same point in the breathing cycle. Again, here we have a little bit of, of uh, horizontal dispersion as well, so we've got some natural point of aim, things are slapping the trigger, which is another thing we see. But here, on this shooter, the trigger and the natural point of aim are pretty good. We don't have a whole lot of horizontal dispersion but we still have that vertical dispersion. It's still a shooter is, is still holding their breath or breaking their shot at different points in the breathing cycle. Here's another target here, kind of the same example. Going up in, the, in a diagonal fashion, natural point of aim, trigger, and breathing. That's the way to analyze those targets. So if you're out on the range and you're finding that your shot group is looking something like this, that can be defined immediately, immediately as breathing. That's the only way that that uh, you can look at this and say, hey, what kind of problem do I have? If you have this going this way, we've talked about it in the past, trigger, natural point of aim. Horizontal dispersion, if your shot group looks something like this, your name is probably Jacob Biden because I got a lot of problems on shooting. Anyway, tighten all this up, work your trigger, work your natural point of aim, work your breathing. Get to where you can get those shots where they'll start to cluster really good. That's kind of what you're looking for. Another thing that you want to watch for in your reticle is if you're starting to see your reticle bounce and you can tell it is from your heartbeat. You probably have too much air in your lungs and you're holding your breath. Get to the bottom of that breathing cycle to make that shot. That is going to minimize the effect of the heartbeat. If you still have a problem, there's a way to fix it. It's a knife through the chest. It works real good, but just once. Another thing on heartbeat that could be the problem, uh, if you're seeing your heartbeat too much, it could be that you're also gripping the rifle a little bit too tight. That heartbeat is actually being transferred into your muscles being so tensed up. So that's another thing. Relax a little bit. Kind of bringing all of this, all of this together. Fundamental talking about is breathing. The error is inconsistencies in the horizontal, I mean in the vertical plane. The fix, to break at the bottom of your breathing cycle, right there every single time. Drive the rifle through recoil, control the trigger straight to the rear, you'll be good to go.